finale, chapter 58, Scarlet. The moment held a lunge between Scarlet and Gabriel, his hands burst into flames, creating an arc of sparks and black smoke as he reached for Tell's delicate shoulder. Scarlet didn't even think she just shoved her sister out of the way and flung herself to the fallen star's path. Spikes flew. Tell screamed. Scarlet might have screamed too. The fallen star collided with her, his hands scorching the same shoulder he burned earlier that night. All Scarlet could feel was pain, and his arm was hurting up her up instead of her burning. Paradise. The flames on his fingers went out, and for the first time since she'd known him, he looked frightened. His brows were pulled tied together over eyes shot through with red. I didn't mean to hurt you. Did you also not mean to kill her? Tell accused Gabriel. He released God and his hands flared into the fire once more, incandescent balls of fire forming in his palm. Stop this. Scott screamed, Paradise wouldn't have wanted you to hurt her daughter or your daughter. Lavon's eyes cut back to him. The fall flames of his fingers went as black as betrayal. He caught her slip. He knew that she was not his paradise, but Scarlet wasn't sure it was a slip. Her performance had failed to elicit to any feelings of love, so maybe it was time to stop performing. She took a step toward him, looking in his injured eyes instead of at the hands that had burned her multiple times. She couldn't think about self-preservation. It was too closely related to fear. And she remembered what her mother had written about fear of giving fate's power. The scholar refused to be afraid. Fear was poison to love, and love was poison to fear. She still couldn't bring herself to love him, but she could bring herself to be vulnerable. And maybe that would get through to him. I know you're afraid of love. I know it's hurt you in the past, and you see it as a weapon. You think love is a disease, but you become that disease. Your fear of love is destroying you and everyone you touch, and it doesn't make you powerful and makes the world around you tragic. Scarlet waved a hand around his catastrophic throne room with his ugly stage, its awful cage, and the throne was still burning with angry fire. You told me you didn't love paradise, but I know you did. He didn't flinch, but he didn't lash out either. He loved my mother and I knew that she loved you. The assassin did go back in time. He took me to see paradise and she was bursting with her love for you. She wouldn't want any of this for you and she wouldn't want you to do the things that you've done. His eyes went a little over to the gaping hole in his scarlet sleeve. The ruined skin beneath this, blistering and burning from where he touched her. Scarlet took a tremendous breath and forced herself to take a step closer. I forgive you. For the longest heartbeat of Scarlet's life, his expression remained indecipherable, but the flames lightning of his hands turned from black to grey, the colour of regret. They crackled as they licked his fingertips, the only sound in the throne room until finally, softer than anything Scarlet had ever heard. I did love her. I loved her so much it scared me, and then I never let myself love again. A golden tear fell down his face. I wish I could take it back, what I did to her. Another fallen tear followed by another and another. Scarlet didn't know they were all from her mother. His eyes were wells of endless pain as if her father was finally feeling the weight of all the unspeakable things he'd done. The flame slightly his finger died. When he cried, another tear, it was clear instead of gold. It was human and it was beautiful and it was the last thing he did before Tella stabbed him in the heart. No! Scarlet fell with Gabriel to the floor. Tella's knife had reached his heart and he was dying quickly. It was what Scarlet had wanted, but she wished she never had it wanted. His mouth twitched with something too forlorn to be called a smile. We both know I don't deserve your sorrow. With the last of his strength, Gabriel picked up the white dagger she dropped. His fingers could barely produce sparks, but somehow he managed to quickly melt the blade of the dagger into the form of the crude flame. The flame-shaped blade glowed with a color she'd never seen before. If she had to describe it, it would have said, it looked like magic, reminding her of what Gabriel had said in the dungeon about fates transferring their powers into objects. He placed the knife back in Scarlet's hand. When I pass, this will free the others I chopped. Use it the way I would not have. Then the fallen star died. And Scarlet cried. She cried for the horrors he had been, and she cried for the wonders that he could have been instead. Chapter 59, Don't Tell Her Tella felt as if the whole world should have stopped or cheered for her. She just saved the fallen star. She killed the monster who murdered her mother. He's also come close to dying. She could still smell the smoke and the char from the flames that had been scorching her. Her hands shook and her heart raced, but then Jax was there, sliding a cool, comforting arm around her and pulling her close. It's all right, my love. But it isn't all right, said a tiny voice inside her head. 
The same annoying voice urged her to pull away from Jax. There was a truth about him that she'd chosen to forget. Mattel didn't want to remember it. She liked the seductive lie that was Jax. She liked his cruel games and his teasing smiles and the way he bit her whenever they kissed. The throne room might have looked like a page. Rose from a horror story, but Jax was her prince of hearts, and he turned it all into a fairy tale ending. She leaned into his touch, and the world became hazy. I did it. Tilla said her voice tinted with disbelief. Of course it did, my love, but we need to get out of here now. Jax held her tighter as he tugged her away from Scarlet. Tilla had seen her fall to the floor with the fallen star, but she hadn't gotten up. She remained slumped against her lifeless body. Wait, my sister. Look at me, don't tell him. Jax twisted her around until she was facing him. Do you still want to spend the rest of your life with me? He asked the question as if it was the only thing that mattered in the world. Now in her life, had Tella felt a question with so much power that Jax looked almost powerless as he asked it. He was a mess of golden hair, seesawed blue eyes, and bitten lips. Beautiful in no way, only broken things could be, and Tella wanted him exactly how he was. She wanted him, fractured and chaotic and completely untamable. The feeling was as consuming as what she felt from him whenever he kissed her, as if it would be, never be enough, even if she gave him everything. You're the only thing I want right now. A ghost of Jack's smile returning, yet it looked so much more real than every other smile he'd given her. He looked happy, despite the death and the wreckage and the smoke in the air. He glowed in a way she'd never seen him glow before. You're all I want as well, but we need to leave right now, or someone might try to stop us from being together. He released her shoulder to capture her hand. He roughly pulled her through the disastrous throne room, as if their lives depended on leaving. Jack stormed past Jester Mad, abandoned stage, spilled puddles of wine in a mirror that looked as if it had a person trapped inside. He barely stopped to open the massive doors that led to the spiking glass courtyard. I had taken over and winking stars rained from above, reflecting on the glassy ground as Tella Legend's voice cut through the night loud enough to start of the sky and tie her stomach into a knot. Tella closed her eyes, as if she could undo the effect Legend had on her. She didn't want him anymore. She'd couldn't even look at him when she's been in the cage. One glance at him and the feeling she didn't even know she possessed had erupted. She hated Legend. She hated everything about him, but somehow the low sound of his voice still tangled her up. Don't stop. Jax jerked her hand so she was flushed against him once more. He was a boy she wanted to fall to the ends of the earth, but her body was betraying her to Legend again. Her legs wouldn't move and his toes had dug into her slippers as if begging for purchase against the ground. Jack stinked harder on her hand, his icy grip tightening around her fingers, but Tella couldn't even look away. As legend approached, he looked like the ending of a doomed love story. His dark hoods were ripped. There was a fresh burn on his chest, and his eyes had once been full of stars but desolate, black with desperate gray cacks, and painful red lines snaking through the whites. Her throat went tight. He shouldn't have hurt her. She hated him. She hated him for all those months he played with her heart. Even now, he still had a piece of it. He'd always hold a piece of it, said the tiny voice inside of her. But Tell ignored the voice. She wanted to take her heart back and give it fully to Jax. Why can't you leave us alone? She cried. Haven't you tormented me enough? Legend's eyes met hers, wide and pleading. But Tell was done giving in to him. Undo whatever you've done to her, Legend roared at Jax. He hasn't done anything, Tell said. You're the one who keeps hurting me. I think that's her way of asking you to leave. Jack smirked and gave Tell a hand a gentle squeeze. He no longer held her as tight. He knew that she belonged to him. Tell her, listen to me, Legend begged. You can't fight what he's done to you. The only one I want to fight is you. She pulled free from Jax, prepared to finally shove Legend away forever. But as soon as she let go of him, Jax vanished and the world shifted. Magic filled the air, thick and sweet. The glass courtyard beneath, Tell's feet, turned into smooth moonstone steps as the golden tower behind Legend disappeared and a new illusion took its place. A temple made of glowing white, topped with doomed roof, covered in outstretched wings, the Temple of Stars. Above it, radiant red fireworks mingled with more stars than Tell had ever seen, recreating the moment that Legend had walked away from her right after saving him. Tell's heart stopped beating altogether. She could have still picture the flat way Legend had looked at her that night and the coldness in his voice as he told her that he wasn't the hero in her story. But now his eyes were brilliant. The stars once again, full of bits of gold that glittered in the night. He was gazing at her the way he had in paintings on the wall, as if he never wanted to leave her, as if he adored her, as if he wanted to be her hero after all. 
Under this illusion, Tella said, unable to stand the sight of him. He was in a hero, and she had never wanted a hero. She was the hero of her own story, and it was time to save herself from him. Bring back the courtyard and Jack's. Legend's bell slashed down, the feeling of his eyes and testify. Once upon a time, the real look in him could have convinced her that he had the ability to give her the world. But now Jax was her world, and there was a room for the legend. If she was being honest, there had never been enough room for him, and he was too all-consuming. I knew you'd think you'd want him, but he's controlling your feelings, legend said, his voice growing lower and deeper with every word. You have to fight against him. You're just jealous. You don't want me. But you don't want anyone else to have me? She tried to shove against his chest to push him away at least. Please stop tormenting me. Just let me go. The edge of Legend's mouth slowly lifted. You don't want holding on to me, Tella. No, I. She looked down to see his fingers gripping her frayed shirt. Two warm hands wrapped gently around her shoulders as Legend held her in place. Her heart beat faster. She really needed to pull away, but she couldn't move. Her body was remembering a time when he wouldn't get this close to her. When he wouldn't put his hands on her, all she wanted was his touch, and now he was holding her as if he planned on keeping her for a very long time. His smile grew. I'm not jealous of Jax. I know your feelings for him aren't real, and you're wrong if you think I don't want you. I've wanted you for so long, and I'll never stop wanting you. His grip grew firmer as he pulled her even closer, until she was pressed against his chest. Her breaths came out short in tiny, angry gasps, and no matter how hard she tried to push him away, she still couldn't manage to do it. When she thought of Jax, her heart beat calmed, but then it craved, the way that legend made it pound, because he didn't just own part of her heart. He belonged to him fully. No. Tell us how to shake the thought of her head. She tried to remember Jax and the way he made her feel, but all she could feel right now was legend as one of the wonderfully warm hands traced down her spine. Do you still want to know why I walked away that night on these steps? No, she said, but somehow the word yes came out. His palms heated and the hand on his shoulder slid to her neck and into her hair, tilting her face up, forcing her to look into his eyes. They were still glassy and dark with flecks of gold that looked like shattered stars and she told herself she hated them. Jack's eyes were beautiful. Jack's eyes were the ones she adored, but then his eyes had captured hers and she couldn't stop staring into them. She told herself his eyes were just another illusion, the same as all the feelings that were threatening to take her over. She shut her eyes, but it didn't help. It only made her more aware of Legend's deep voice as he said, I'm sorry I left you that night. I shouldn't have left. I shouldn't have hurt you. And I shouldn't have gotten scared and run away when I realized that I was falling in love with you. Tell's eyes flashed open and were spilled out before she could stop them. You told me you weren't capable of love. I didn't think I was. Legend moved his hand from her hair to cup her cheek, wanting her face as if she'd never touched anything so precious. I can't say that I understand love but that I am very good at it because I've never loved anyone before. But I love everything about you, Dontella, Dragna. Everything. His hand dropped lower to stroke her jaw. I love the secrets you haven't told me and the lies you try to get away with. I love your stubbornness and your persistence. I love the way you always pretend I don't care when I visit you in dreams. I love that you never stop fighting for what you want or the people you love, even when they don't deserve it. I love you. Um tend to stop loving you and i hope that somewhere deep inside you will still love me too his mouth slowly lowered to hers moving incrementally closer warning her that if she didn't want to kiss him she needed to pull away but she no longer wanted to pull away and she wasn't even sure she could have love really was another type of magic she was trembling all over shaking off the rest of the spell that legend had broken when he told her that he loved her he loved her her limbs trembled harder with something like wonder at the thought she couldn't bring herself to speak, so she tried to tell him that she loved him with a kiss, with his full, warm lips finally pressed against hers. They were so perfect and soft and sweet and gentle, even though she was supposed to be letting Legend know that she loved him. She felt as if he was the one repeating the words with every longerous press of his lips, and as they weren't in any rush, as if they had all the time in the Apparently, Tella shoved him away. It was the last thing she wanted to do. She loved him. She knew she did. She wanted his lips all over hers until she forgot to breathe. She wanted to hold on to him forever. But he wouldn't have it forever if she didn't let go him go right now. His jaw tense and the pain look returned to his face. What's wrong? You need to leave. Tella didn't recognize her own voice. And if it were rattling herself with every word, she wanted to be selfish. She wanted to keep him. She loved him, which was why she forced herself to push him away. You need to leave me before you stay like this. 
It's too late. No, it's not. Tilla shoved him again. He didn't even stumble backward on the monstrous steps. She turned to run. If he wasn't going to leave, she would. But before she moved an inch, his hand clasped around her wrist, and he pulled her back, binding her to him with his arms. Tella, let me go. She could already see him changing. She could see it in his smile and the way it filled with love. As it lit up his entire face, she tried to pray his arms away, but it was less than half-hearted. She'd always thought he was beautiful, but when he looked at her the way he was looking at her right now, she was absolutely everything. If you don't let me go, I'm going to be able to fight you anymore. Good, because I don't want to fight you. I just want to love you. He left her a little and pressed another kiss to her lips. This is my choice. I choose you, Dontella, and I don't want mortality. You're my forever.